Hello there, this is Cassidy Frazy, and once again, I'm coming to you from the Snarking Dead, and I am doing another video recap of Season 6.1, the first half of Season 6 of The Walking Dead, those episodes that were missed. And today I'm going to talk about Episode 3, titled, Thank You. And by the end of this episode, most people were saying something completely different. <laughs> And thank you but we'll get to the reasons for that later um, this was a very polarizing episode and this episode and the episode that follows this episode were very polarizing uh, among fans for uh, various reasons uh, separate reasons actually but <coughs> this episode really highlighted the fact that The Walking Dead has a red shirt issue and uh, the red shirts were all the Alexandrians and this was a perfect example of that. It starts out with we're back with Rick and his merry band of adventurers uh, Michonne and Glenn and Nicholas and Heath and a few other people from Alexandria and they're making their way back as quickly as they can to Alexandria with the zombie fun run half of it broke off in their direction and it's behind them so rick decides he pulls michonne and uh, glenn to the side and he decides that he's going to run back and get the rv that was used in the very first episode to brace help brace up uh, a wall that had been set up to get the zombies or the walkers i should say don't use the z word right right uh, to get the walkers to make a big right-hand turn uh, out of Alexandriaville. And so he's going to go get that RV, and he's going to use it to lead the walkers off in a different direction. Right off the bat, this is a bad idea, because we have seen in the past, RVs in The Walking Dead do not work real well. <laughs> they, they're just, you know, don't mess with RVs. They're, they're just always a lot of trouble, so... But this is Rick, and Rick's telling Michonne and Glenn, essentially, you know, don't worry about these guys you got behind you. Get them back to Alexandria, but hey, if some of them die along the way, yeah, shit happens. Don't worry about it. <laughs> and that's what it be. Rick, at this point, it's weird. He has this complete disdain for the people of Alexandria. You know, he's, he's exerting the Rictatorship 2.0 at this point, but he really doesn't give a shit about these people. And you can tell. It's crazy Rick blown full out, and he's going to do what he wants to do. He knows his people aren't going to question him, and if any of the Alexandrians question him, fuck them, who cares? They're, they're dead meat. You know, here's a red shirt, guys. Put it on. Don't worry. It doesn't mean anything. And, of course, some of the Alexandrians hear this, which kind of upsets him. But, of course, they're also proven, <laughs> Rick is proven completely right. Because at that point, they're, they're set upon by some walkers. Uh... One guy gets, you know, one guy gets bit. Um, <laughs> another guy, uh, <laughs> you know, he panics and shoots a dude in the leg. It's just a, it's just a mess, you know. And on top of that, uh, the one, the one of the women in the group, she's, she's already hobbling because she hurt her ankle. So, you know, Rick's, Rick's pretty much proven his point. Screw these guys. You know, just if you have to, just leave them. Well, of course, Glenn's not going to leave anybody. Michonne, on the other hand, she might, but no, Glenn's not. And Nicholas and Heath are there, too. Uh, Heath, you can kind of trust because he's been out on runs before, so he knows the routine. Nicholas, why this asshole is still alive at this point, I don't know. You know, Glenn won't pop him. That's the thing. Glenn won't pop him. Nicholas has tried to kill Glenn. Glenn won't kill him back. Glenn does, you know, when, when Rick says we don't kill the living, Glenn's really the only guy that adheres to that ethos of I don't kill the living. He has not killed a living person. You know, Michonne, you, know, you try to kill her, you're going to get the katana through the neck. Carol, 
Uh, she'll just sneak into your room at night and, you know, put a knife in your head and douse you with gasoline and set you on fire. Rick would just blow your ass away, and he's done that already. There have been people who have tried to kill Rick, and when you try to kill Rick, Rick usually kills you. So, that's the that's the thing that goes on there. So, it's a good thing that Nicholas decided he was going to try Punk and Glenn because he picked the one dude in the group who is absolutely not going to do any shit to him. So Rick's off in the woods going to get the RV because, hey, what's a zombie fun run without an RV? And Glenn and Michonne and everybody else end up in this town that Nicholas knows because they've made a run there before. Nicholas is not like the greatest guy in the world because you can already start to see the stress of being on the run from walkers is starting to get to him. He's not, he's not having the easiest of days. And it's, it's starting to go a little bad. He's getting the crazy eyes. He's, he's zoning out and stuff like that. Everyone holds up in a pet shop while Glenn and Nicholas decide hey, we got a great idea for distracting the walkers. Nicholas remembers there's this big feed store over on the other end of town with all this grain in it. And of course, we know grain is very explosive after it's been sitting for a while and it dries out and everything. So we'll just set the damn thing on fire and all the walkers will come there and they'll watch it and they'll see you know, the grain popping and everything else. And we'll just sneak out of town. Well, of course, so Nicholas and Glenn take off and the rest of the herd that broke off from the fun run uh, shows up in town. So Michonne is left with Heath and the other guys from Alexandria and Heath is kind of like, hey I heard what Rick was saying, you know, you, you wouldn't actually kill us or just leave us behind or anything like that, would you? And of course Michonne at this point starts delving into, you know, what have you done to survive? Have you ever done anything that made you wonder if you were still human if you were still you by the time you're done with this stuff. And it's an indication that we've, we've been seeing over the last season or so, half season actually, since they started on the road to Alexandria. And it actually began not long after uh, they left the prison in season five, where you see Michonne starting to break up a little bit. She's been out on her own for a long time before she met up with the group. And now that she's been part of a group again, and she has lost them again, you can see she doesn't want to do that anymore. She wants to be part of a group. She doesn't want to be on her own. And in a way, she's probably a little like Carol. She's getting tired of all the killing. It's She's just doing what she needs to survive at this point, but she's not digging it again. She knows that I can only go so far. And we've already seen one episode where she was starting to lose it big time. She was out in the wild and she just slaughters a bunch of zombies because she's losing it. She's really getting to the point where she's cracking. And if you know the comic, you kind of know what happens to her in the future. You've seen this. But um, at this point, yeah, she's starting to get a little woozy. She's starting to have a hard time with everything that's going on. And it's, she's becoming very, very, very human. I mean, from the way she was when you first saw her, where she was just like this insane killing machine, uh, very quiet, very stark, very, you know, very stoic. And now she's becoming more and more human. And it's going to be interesting to see what happens to her um, in the second part of the season. You know, is this going to be the point where I know a lot of people are shipping her and Rick, although I can't, I don't see it. I, I'm sorry. I really don't see her and Rick hooking up. That would be one of the like greatest mistakes in the world because they just don't seem compatible. There doesn't seem to be chemistry there, but that's besides the point. Um, she's basically letting Heath know, we're gonna do what we can to get you guys back. Don't worry, I'm not gonna leave you out here. So Rick gets back to the RV. He gets back to the RV, he starts it up, and he's going to go off someplace and wait for the walkers to show up and try to lead, lead them away because he thinks he can't. So, you know, he's on the radio to Glenn telling him this, but before he gets to the RV, he gets a set on by walkers 
and he cuts his hand real bad. And this was, some of the people thought, oh my gosh, you know, Rick's cut his hand, it's been infected with zombie stuff, he's gonna go zombie, you know, he's gonna walk her out and all this other stuff. Well, no he didn't. Um, some people were also joking that they'll probably have to cut his hand off because if you know the comic, you know what happens to Rick's right hand. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, yes, uh, that is when you meet the, the real governor from the comic. Uh, nothing like the governor from the TV show, who um, really wasn't all that dangerous. Uh, whereas the governor from the comic was more like, Hi, I'm the governor. Hi, I'm Rick. Where's your people? Oh, I don't know. Whack! <laughs> Get off your right hand. Okay, you want to tell me now? Uh, that was basically how their first meeting went down. And so when Rick slices open his right hand and everything, people are thinking, oh my gosh, you know, it's infected, so what's Rick gonna have to do? Whack, I'm gonna have to whack off my right hand, uh, which of course he doesn't do. Although Andrew Lincoln has said, I would have loved to have lost the right hand, except they would have had to green screen the hand completely all the time. They would have had to green it and remove it and everything else, and nobody wanted to do that, so. It was easier to do with Herschel's leg because you only have to do a few long shots of showing him without a leg. But um, he gets at he gets to the RV. He takes off. A subset of this is we go back to Abraham and Sasha and Daryl, and probably one of the lamest subsets in any of the Walking Dead stuff, where Daryl just decides, uh, I don't really want to stay with you guys and help you lead this walker parade down the street so i'm gonna go off and help rick uh drive around go back to alexandria i never really got what exactly it was daryl was supposed to be doing um i think he just got bored and decided i'm gonna tool around because hey not like there's traffic out here not like i have to worry about anything except maybe you know running into a pack of walkers which he could have done but um, it was really stupid because that whole subset consisted of Abraham and Sasha still driving along. Daryl takes off, and you see him kind of tooling around on his bike. And then eventually Danny comes back and rejoins Sasha and Abraham, and they keep muttering down the road. It just did not make sense. It was really kind of weird. But... Uh, Michonne and group. There's walkers hidden inside the pet store. Of course, you know, there's walkers everywhere. Guys just hold up someplace and got out, and the walkers break out, so they have to get out into the street. Or of course, there's more walkers, and that's when the red shirts uh, start happening uh, right off the bat. Uh, one of the Alexandrian women, Annie. Uh, that name is dear to my heart, by the way. Um, you know, she goes down, she's the one with the bad ankle, and she goes down right off the bat. Oh, let them eat me while you run off. Okay, we will. And then they get uh, a little further down the road. They get up to a fence. Uh, the one dude who's already been bit, he knows he's going to die. He doesn't make it over the fence, and he had written a farewell note to his new wife. You're a goner from the start, dude. Uh, sorry. He writes a, a farewell note to his wife, which, of course, gets left behind. Michonne gets over the fence. Heath gets over the fence. And uh, one of the last guys who gets over the fence, I had to check the name here uh, to see who it was. Uh, who was it? Uh, oh, come on, it was right here in front of me. <laughs> I had to check the name. Um, it was Scott. Scott. Scott gets over the fence. Scott's a dude that's been shot in the leg. And this is a walking dead first because we follow them out of town. We, we eventually see them. They get out of town. They get back to Alexandria. And they, they, well, they're outside of Alexandria when they get there. And they see that something's going on. And this is a walking dead first because it's three people of color. <laughs> and they're not dead. They haven't died. Uh, it's actually three people of color all together, and they make it back. Uh, Heath is an important character from the, well, kind of semi-important character from the, the comic book. Michonne, Kirkman has stated that Michonne is really the only bulletproof character in all of The Walking Dead. There's just no chance in hell he's ever going to kill her. And Scott is played by Kendrick Green. <laughs> 
Who is Kendrick Green? Well, Kendrick Green happens to be married to Swanika Martin Green, who happens to play Sasha. Nepotism, it exists in the zombie apocalypse. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's her husband and he's doing guest shots. So, yeah, it wasn't his time to die. Let's just put it that way. It wasn't his time to die. He probably will die, but not quite yet. So we'll see where that goes. But um, the last two things that come up here that are really, really, really important is that Rick gets to his point where he's waiting for the walkers to cross the road. And wouldn't you know it? The, the wolves that managed to get away from Alexandria, they're in the RV. And they attack Rick, who kills them, of course, because that's just the sort of person he is. Well, there's actually like a couple in the RV. Rick kills them. One of them happens to have an AK, I think one of them had an AK-47. And he notices that there's other wolves walking up along the side of the RV. So he does the smart thing. He just pumps full auto right through the side of the RV, which is the smartest thing in the world to do because 7.62 round, it's gonna go right through that sucker. It's gonna be like tissue paper. Nothing's gonna stop it. So he takes out all five wolves. He figures out by looking in their bags that they've been to Alexandria because he finds a baby food jar. No. And then the next thing we know, the RV is surrounded by walkers. And this is an important thing to keep in mind because it raises a question that pops up later two episodes from now. And it's one that I'm still trying to work on in my mind of what happens. But yeah, Rick's in the RV surrounded by walkers cliffhanger but the big the big one the big one that happens the big thing that happens <sighs> Nicholas and Glenn get across town of course the feed store is already burnt down which if nobody in Alexandria saw apparently because when this thing went up it had to have burnt like mad and no one saw this shit <laughs> yeah come on Nicholas is already freaking out because they found the guy that shot uh, Scott in the leg. He was dead. He was being eaten by walkers. They found another guy who had come there on an earlier run with Nicholas and his merry gang of idiots. And he was walkerfied. And Nicholas had to put him down. The walkers are coming after them now. Nick is losing the shit. It, he is just not handling it real well. So they get trapped in a blind alley. And I mean trap trap. It, it's big time. It there's, doesn't look as if there's any way out. They climb up on top of a dumpster. And you know, Nicholas has the crazy eyes. He's got the ringing in his ears. Everything's going on. He can't even hear Glenn yelling at him. And finally he snaps back into reality and Glenn's like, don't worry, don't worry, I'm going to save you. Don't worry, we're going to get out of this. And Nicholas just looks at him and says, thank you. <laughs> Blows his brains out. Glenn splattered in blood. And all of a sudden, from ground view looking up, they go on to the ground. And of course, however the hell this happened, it looked like Glenn grabbed Nick and fell backwards. And then the next scene is of Glenn laying on the ground screaming. Of course, there's music playing so you don't hear this. Screaming as intestines are being ripped out into the air. And there we have it. Glenn's dead. Glenn has died. He's dead. He's died a horrible zombie-eating death. And the episode for about half the viewing audience went from thank you to fuck you <laughs> at this point. <laughs> I could have been, I mean, I, I was watching the reaction of some people on social media on, on a Facebook group a bit, and they were screaming, they were yelling, you know, well, typing, yelling, yelling. 
and it was they were just losing their mind. It was like, oh my God, Glenn's dead. Oh God, ah! you know. Yeah, Glenn's dead. He's dead. He re <laughs> he's really dead. He's dead, and at this point, he's probably hanging out with Jon Snow, having some drinks and some canapes, you know. Go figure. Uh, because we know Jon Snow is dead, too. But that was how the show ended. Uh, it ended with Glenn's death, more or less. That was the most, it actually ended with, you know, uh, you know, it actually ended with, um, Rick in the RV, but Glenn's death was the, the traumatic point where everybody just sort of like freaked out and, you know, what are we going to do? Forgetting, of course, that it's called The Walking Dead and it is also known as being in the zombie apocalypse and, you know, it's not exactly <laughs> the nicest thing in the world to go through. So, this was, a very, like I said, this was a polarizing episode in that a lot of people were just shocked by all the shit that went on. It seemed like, you know, survival, 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 Glenn's dead! You know, that's that's pretty much how the episode went. And um, in the grand scheme of things, it almost didn't seem as if um, it really did anything, except establish the fact that Nicholas was dead and Rick feels that the Alexandrians are a bunch of freaking red, uh, red shirts. He has absolutely um, no warmth or concern for them. So, so the Rictatorship 2.0. Rick at this point is actually becoming Governor 2.0. Well, actually Governor 3.0 at this point. We've had Governor 1 and Governor 2.0. Now we're having Governor Rick Governor 3.0. And um, it, he's almost as good. Uh, too bad the governor's dead. They could get together and discuss, you know, strategy, political strategy. So, so that's... Episode three, thank you. No, really, thank you. <laughs> and the next one I'll do is for what is probably, unquestionably, the most polarizing episode uh, that The Walking Dead's probably ever done. And you'll know why, because you'll know what it is, because it's not here right now. Here, is not here. It'll be over there. It'll be here soon enough, but right now, here's not here. So that'll be my next video recap. Thank you for watching, and I hope you enjoyed it. And just remember, Glenn's dead, baby. Glenn's dead. <laughs>